Greetings, humans, greetings, and welcome back to another fun-filled episode. We're here, 29-year veteran, and be the woods, people, it's where bears live, and even, even the ladies over at TikTok, cinnamon, out of eight TikTok women, they would agree they'd rather see a bear in the woods. And a man in the woods, it is YouTube's number one show by a bear. Great to have all of you here with us here today. Uh, thanks for sh uh, stopping by the last time as well. We had some fun. Uh, you know, bear is sometimes asked, he says, uh, what kind of show? Well, uh, uh, you do a show on YouTube, bear? I'm like, yeah, oh, okay. What type of show do you do? I says, well... You know, we normally do comic books, comic stuff, comic movies sometimes, a little bit of entertainment there, you know, sometimes some news, this and that. Uh, not many shows kind of in this space do a, a fashion show every once in a while. So thank you all for showing up uh, for our great fashion show the last time. Uh, Hannah Goodwin was our winner. Congratulations to her. There you go. Uh, hello, Bear. What is the record for the longest gur? Uh, I think you could beat it. I, uh, I don't know. That's a good question. Hey, Siri. What is the world record for the longest gur? The longest documented and verified human lifespan. No, not lifespan. 122 years, apparently. But uh, that's not what I asked, Siri. Ah, for crying out loud. She'll get better in the next update, we hope. Thank you, Siri. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, the people ask you what type of show you do, and they don't say, Ah, Talking Bear! Well, sometimes. Sometimes they do, but, uh, uh, yeah. So we do kind of a variety, a little bit of a different, different stuff out there. So, I mean, uh, now that we've got P Money here, uh, let's go ahead. Uh, it went a little long the last time. With our winner out here, and a good win. But uh, let's go ahead. Uh, Bear didn't realize it, but apparently there was red carpet for uh, that would be the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame that they actually inducted uh, Cher into. So uh, let's go ahead. Uh, while we're here, let's just go ahead, jump straight on into it uh, with our brand new fashion show. <laughs> Ah, boy, I got P Money there. I got him good there. He, he was thinking y'all for a second. He's like, oh my god, we're going to be doing another fashion show. No. Oh, we're not. We just do that every once in a while, man. Just every one. <laughs> he says, again? Yes. <laughs> no, not again. Not again. Not at all. No, uh, let's go ahead. Uh, let's, while we're here, <laughs> before Bear loses any more viewers. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into our good old campaign updates for you good people out here. Uh, including Titan. That's a might from Gary Shipman. Uh, it looks like he just got over uh, 500 subscribers. So, congratulations on uh, Gary's fifth or sixth channel. Uh, good job out there. But uh, make sure you go back his book. Volume 3, My Asthma. Gary Shipman, uh, 13,000. He needs to push that over 14, for crying out loud. Crying out loud. <laughs> uh, P-Money just got in Jawbreakers uh, in the mail today. Well, congratulations, sir. Actually, Bear um, just, let me let me see if I can bring it up here. Uh, Bear actually just got done with the um, uh, first kill. I uh, was uh, reading that this weekend and I uh, got to check that out. Uh, was, the plan was uh, to put that up against um, Extend. From Shane Davis. Um, I have not read Xcend just yet, so uh, hopefully we'll be able to do a head-to-head -head, uh, the next time, um, Saturday. So uh, we'll try and put uh, First Kill head-to-head -head up against uh, Xcend. But uh, yeah, very, very good. I enjoyed, uh, I enjoyed First Kill. Um, uh, Aaron Alfetti did a great job with the. Um, uh, with all the art. Uh, great coloring, by the way. 
a uh, good story. I, I like the story from uh, Chuck Dixon. It, some of the other artists, I'm not sure if they got to write some as well, but it was it was just slightly. They didn't go together as well as they sh maybe should have. Uh, I didn't mind shifting the art styles, but uh, the, the writing, uh, it needed to be a little bit more kind of consistent throughout. But um, uh, we'll talk a little bit about that the next time. But uh, I hope you enjoy Jawbreakers. I've not gotten that good if I ordered that or not. I uh, hope you enjoy that, P. Mike. Hope you enjoy that. But let's go ahead and get back to it. Uh, we've got uh, front. Well, uh, let me go through it real quick. A uh, Titan. Doing pretty good. Let's see. Um, Cyber Frog. Holy cow! Seven hundred eighty thousand. He might break a million before the um, before the campaign ends. I thought it was going to end early this month, but apparently it's going on strong. People going on strong. So go check that out. Seven hundred eighty thousand. Almost seven eighty one. And of course, God like if you really want to buy it. I really don't know why. Uh, you know, other than the artwork. Um, but uh, there you go, 109,855. You only got 22 days left, people. So if you want it, you better pick it up before Thanksgiving. Before Thanksgiving out here, people. But uh, let's go ahead, jump into... Oh, where is it? Oh, sorry, people. Let me do the thing with the thing. Uh, from... That'd be Kevin Sharp, the Kev Hulk, 76. He says, hey, Dragon Guard fans. Hey, hey! Uh, hopefully everyone is doing well in light of a tur turbulent, uh, tur uh, turbulent a couple of weeks uh, for the eastern United States. Yeah, tell me about it. Tell me. Tell me about it. Uh, wait, Godlike is not your favorite book. I didn't realize that from the dozen previous times you said it. No, not it. Not at all. Great artwork. Story. Story not so old. Siri, what are you doing listening in to me? Hmm? I've already got the YouTube show. You better you better put a like in there, Siri. I see you looking at me with that one eye. I'm turning you off, Siri. There you go. Turn that off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was watching me the whole time. Like, how 3,000? It's scary, man. It's definitely scary. <laughs> a look out, motorists. Henry is out there listening while driving again, so uh, make sure you keep both hands on the wheel, Henry. Uh, uh, both eyes as well. Uh, you can keep one ear out for beer, but not both. Not both. You gotta listen for traffic and, um, uh, you know, sirens and all that sort of stuff out there. Great to have you, Henry. Great to have you here. Uh, Henry did not come for our, for our lovely fashion show the last time. P-Money just loved the heck out of that fashion show and... Uh, we're going to have to do one again here pretty soon, just just for old Pima. You know, we've got, uh, you know, uh, Halloween coming up. Uh, we've also got the holidays coming up. Uh, all perfect times. Do another fashion show, Pima. Uh, anyways, I, I wanted to update you on the progress, Kevin says, of the book as the colors are almost done on the last 11 pages. Uh, he has five pages in progress of flats. Once those are done, he'll be moving on to the final script. I had a hiccup in um, uh, that I need to replace my primary iPad that I work with. Oh, for crying out loud. Yeah, that's that's a tough one out there. Uh, otherwise, final progress will look like this. He says colors, a final script, lettering, editing, and then the print. So there you go. As always, thank you for your your patience as I strive to make this my best work I've ever printed. That's from Kev Hulk 76 out here. So if you got your Dragon Guard, you're waiting on your Dragon Guard, people. It's coming. Uh, somebody was asking about that, I think, the last time or the time before last. And I says, hold on! Hold your horses, people. Do people still have horses to hold? I don't know, but uh, hold your horses. Dragon Guard's coming along, people. And here Kevin is, just letting us know. So hopefully, hopefully, maybe he might beat Mike Miller. Um, I hope to have it before the end of the year. That would be, that'd be great, Kev. That would be, that would be great. Uh, at least he's updating and saying he's still working on it. Yeah, I don't think Kev, uh, other than maybe his iPad going down, I, I know he's had some health issues. Uh, but I I'm pretty sure he's been uh, working on it pretty constantly. He had some issues... If Bear remembers correctly, there was a character or something like that that was too close to another 
your comic book or somebody else was doing something else, so he had to rewrite some stuff. Um, I think he had to do a, a little bit of um, coloring as well, so it looks like he's getting, uh, let's see, he's almost done on the last 11 pages, and then he's got five more, you know, so 16 pages, 16 pages out of whatever, 70, 70 odd pages there, people, so, um, hopefully, that's the, that's the word of the day, hopefully, 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 we'll be able to check out a Dragon Guard, not too distant future, people, not, not at all, people. Uh, well, uh, that, that is all of the campaign updates that Bear has here. It was only the one. Only the one update, but always great to hear from uh, Kev Hulk 76 Doing the great work out there, and hopefully we'll get our, get our hands slash claws on whatever he has waiting for us in Dragon Guard here. Yes. Yes, indeed, people. Well, we are, people... Uh, some people may have already voted, uh, including Bear. Including Bear, you know, actually uh, several, several times. He's he's voted here several times. We got several more to go. Got uh, less than uh, 14 days left. What is it? 13 days now. So uh, uh, we will we will continue on that. But um, uh, it is early voting. Here in Florida, so we've got an update for you good people out there in case you were be sure keeping an eye out for great state of Florida. Uh, many election offices' websites uh, crashed on the first day of early voting uh, for the Tampa Bay Times and Justin Garcia. Local supervisors used backup versions just in case. So it's all going swimmingly, people. All going swimmingly. The public-facing websites for county election offices across the state were down on Monday morning and early afternoon, making critical information about where and when to vote more difficult to find. As Pinellas, Hillsborough, and many other counties started early in-person voting, and literally they were just hit by a hurricane like two weeks ago. Uh, several websites uh, had a killer hurricane, by the way. Killer hurricane. Uh, several websites had error messages on Monday morning say they were under heavy load at this time. Unclear what's causing the problem. Although Tallahassee-based vendor VR Systems released a statement around midday saying there was no indication of malicious activity. Ah, no, 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 not at all. A supervisor offices began experiencing outages last week. The company said an investigation to find the cause. That'd be the other way, people. Midday Monday, uh, Hillsborough, Pascal, and Pendellis election offices posted backup versions of the website with basic information about polling sites and how voters can check their information. Uh, but some other election supervisor websites, well, they still showed error messages, people. Technology troubles did not affect voting tallies. Just the public-facing website. Oh, sure, sure, I'm sure it didn't vote. Didn't affect the voting tallies at all. Uh, and as of Monday afternoon, the normal election websites, uh, they seem to be up and running. Sure. Uh, lousy technology, says Peabody. Whatever happened to using pencil and putting an X on it? There you go. I mean, uh, hey, they know how to do it in Canada. They... they Elected their first black guy, uh, prime minister, so good job for you. Good job. Maybe you can tell us how it's done, P-Money. A Broward County Supervisor of Election, Joe Scott. It's not your real name, sir. A question whether the problem... Doesn't it sound like Broward County uh, Supervisor of Election, Joe Scott, uh, might not be his actual name and... Might be on the run from the law, one might say. One might say. Uh, question whether the problems Monday were related the troubles that VR systems had during the primary elections in August, in which the websites of several county election supervisors went down or struggled to load as polls closed. Whoops. VR systems said in a statement that it brought in outside experts and implemented significant changes since the primary, which didn't work. It's still down. But hey, I'm sure your vote will be counted, and uh, I'm sure it'll be okay, people. I'm sure it'll be, I'm sure it'll be just fine, people. There's nothing wrong. 
nothing wrong with any of that going on, people. I tell you. Let me tell you. And we've had a woman prime minister, too, uh, for two months. Really. I, I had no idea that um, the black guy was also a woman for two months. I, I Man, oh man, that guy really... What's his name? Trudeau. He really gets around, people. He definitely... Definitely does get around. I mean, he goes from uh, being a black man uh, to being a, a, a woman. Um, I, you know, I don't know if that's the tuck or if it's just, you know, the whole the whole shebang. You know, uh, you, you just never know, people. You just, just never know with those stinking Canadians. You know, may I... I don't know. Maybe they, uh, maybe, maybe they hand out uh, maple syrup, I guess, uh, at the uh, polling polling stations out there. It can help sway the vote one way or the other. I don't know. I have no idea where the next election is in there in Canada. I know they just had one not too, not too long ago. But this is for our election, P money. This is for our election. God dang it. Yes. Well, I, I had to enjoy the memes. Enjoy the memes here. Hadn't done that in a little bit. I meant to do it the last show, but uh, we got we went a little long with our uh, with our fashion show that we had going on here. So congratulations, Hannah. Good job. Looking great out there. <laughs> oh, I always enjoy just twisting the screws, twisting twisting the old screws out there for LP. All right, uh, moving. We gotta move along here, people, because uh, there's a topic that's not discussed a whole lot, but Bear is an expert in, and that would be trash, people. That's right. We've got a trashy news story here, people, and you've been doing it wrong all along, people. All along. That's actually how to put... The bag into the trash can, people. So let's go ahead. Let's find out. Uh, for, <laughs> there, there's the feds looking in on beer there. There they are. Let's go ahead. Look in your post. And Brooke Cato, you're probably putting in your garbage bag in the trash bin. All wrong. I feel dumb. Well, not beer. I, I don't feel dumb at all. Beer is an expert on trash. Uh, but let's find out. Let's find out how to put your trash bag into the trash can. According to a woman on TikTok, I don't know if she would rather see a bear in the woods than a man in the woods. But let's find out how to put a bag into the trash can. Uh, they say don't trash this life hack. Oh, jeez. Paid by the puns. A uh, one woman was stunned, people. Stunned to find a trick to lining her garbage bin with a trash bag, people. She was today years old, and she found out that garbage bags come inside out in the box. Uh, creator Sasha De De no, there's a Z in there, all for crying out. I don't know this lady on TikTok. Uh, adding, she now feels dumb. Well, uh, hey, listen, it happens to the best of us. Uh, she demonstrated the so-called hack in a viral clip, 9.4 million views, where she put the opening of the garbage bag around the lip of the can while it was, quote, inside out, then pushed the remainder of the bag into the can. No shaking required, people. Uh, viewers who have been inundated with all the ways they're doing uh, life wrong, like washing jeans, we had that story, pouring champagne, they were stunned. Some people argue that the bags aren't inside out. They're not. They're not at all. Uh, this is just a clever kitchen trick. Others applauded, whatever that lady's name's, demonstration. Uh, at this point, I'm not even breathing. I'm, I'm not sure I'm even breathing right, since everything I'm doing is wrong when you were quit. Well, there's hope for all of us. Uh, life needs to come with better instructions, joked another. All these years of shaking it like a sheet in the air, then putting it in the bottom of it, the loud shake of the bag alerts my husband that he indeed did not take out the trash when I asked, and I'm out doing it, objected one Karen out there. However, uh, the Home Good Brands Hefty 
previously debunked that this TikTok hack is the only correct way to line the trash bin. They said, can confirm, there's no wrong way to line a trash bin. No wrong way. Well, I, I don't know because some of them actually have seams in there. So if you flip it inside out, like now you've got the seam on the inside when it should be on the outside. So you'd figure it would... Bear knows a thing or two about ripping apart garbage bags and right there along the seam. That's the best place to, to rip it out. So yeah, if you want to just pick up your garbage bag uh, filled with all sorts of, you know, liquid and stinky stuff in there and you go to go to pick it up and then all of a sudden it, it just, you know, rips a, rips a sunder for you. Well, I don't listen to this lady on TikTok because... Well, she's dumb before, and she probably is dumb now. You don't put it inside out, people. I mean, li like what? Does it save you like three seconds? You, you, you open it up, you shake it, you put the thing in the trash bag, and there you go. Away you go. Boom. Problem solved, people. Problem solved. P-Money also does not put the trash out. Poor Mrs. P-Money has to do it each week. Ay, ay, ay. I just push the garbage down in our kitchen bin, and somehow it ends up on the curb every week. And my wife is some reason angry at me every week. Well, well, I'm so sorry, P Money. Uh, yeah, you can push it down. You can push it down. I, I'm not really sure how it quote ends up on the curb. Ends up on the curb. But I'm glad that Mrs. P Money is able to uh, put in her trash bag the correct way not not the wrong way people it's like a usb a port you know there's there's three ways to put in the usb a port the wrong way the wrong way and the right way so you gotta, you gotta be able to do it the right way people <laughs> and people don't know what bear's talking about you know you try to put the little usb port in and it's like oh gosh it's not working so you flip it around and it's still not working again so you flip it back around and all of a sudden it works again for some reason Inside, inside joke, people. Inside joke. Inside joke out here. Well, uh, we actually were talking, talking about this, oh gosh, a couple weeks ago, maybe a month or so ago, something like that. Um, Chick-fil-A. The uh, fast food outlet Chick-fil-A uh, is getting into the streaming business. If you didn't think there was too many streaming outfits already, there's going to be one more, people. And that's from Chick-fil-A. Uh, uh, from Deadline. And Peter White, Chick-fil-A, has revealed more details about its move into the, uh, move into the entertainment business. With the cat, what? Okay, people, uh, help bear, P-Money, help bear out here. Uh, the cow. Um, does this look like an odd-looking cow to you? Like, why are the... Why are the eyes on top of his head? That's I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what's going on there. That's not a that like they took the. This looks like a Halloween cow. They took the eyes like the aliens. They came down. They did all the mutilation and everything. They took the eyeballs out of the socket and then they just put the eyeballs on top of the cow's head, along with the um the eyelashes as well. Eyebrows, I should say. Do cows have eyebrows? Hey Siri, do cows have eyebrows? Okay, I found this on the web. Do cows have they do, in fact, have eyelashes. Wow. Huh. No way. Most animals are covered in hair, though, so that makes it a little hard to... Thank you, Siri. Makes it a little hard to tell if they actually have eyebrows or not, but... Um... Very interesting. Forget the eyes, the eyebrows are in midair. I know. Those aliens did some work on that cow. They did some work on that cow. What is a streaming service called? Chick-fil-A Plus? Let's find out. Earlier this summer, Deadline broke... No, Bear broke the news. The fast food company had started commissioning original content. Uh, the chicken firm is launching Chick-fil-A Play. November 18th, people. Get your money ready. Uh, instead, you know, if the election doesn't go the way that you want it to, and you just want to drown your sorrows, uh, go on to Chick-fil-A Play and be able to watch uh, uh, Moo Moo Cows. What is it called? Chick-fil-A Cows. 
It said that the service was, quote, designed for parents and kids to share an experience together, whether they're enjoying a meal at home, in the drive-thru, or really anywhere in between. There's a lot of stuff that's in between home and drive-thru. Uh, it will launch a number of original animated shows, including Evergreen Hills. Sounds like a, uh, like a CW, you know, uh, uh, you know, Kind of a chick flick show. Ah, we're going to go to Evergreen Hills. Uh, and a chick flick house. Uh, scripted podcasts, including a hidden island and a handful of cooking shows and interactive stories. Perby. <coughs> ah, wrong, wrong, wrong path here. <coughs> the, uh, the mute button is a little far away from here. One second here. Chick-fil-A cows, probably about cows trying to convince people to eat more chicken than beef. Good luck with that. Good luck with that. Cooking shows. I wonder what kind of cooking shows they're going to have on the, what was it called? A Chick-fil-A play. Chick-fil-A play. I, I guess the uh, premium version will be a Chick-fil-A play plus. Chick-fil-A play, or Chick-fil-A play max. Could be either one. Hospitality and fun have always been at the core of Chick-fil-A family uh, experience, whether inside of our restaurants and play areas or through our kids' meal, said somebody. The Chick-fil-A Play app is a digital extension of that experience and another way we're reimagining play for our guests in a unique way through entertainment that really encourages time together, people. That's what you want. You want to gather the kids around and say, Oh my God, what happened to that cow? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's, that's some stuff right there. A deadline understands that it's gearing up for eight slightly larger content plans starting next year. Has ordered a 10-part family-friendly game show from guests on uh, Glassman Media. Company behind the NBC's The Wall... Wait a minute. NBC can have a wall, but we can't. Aye, aye, aye. And Michael, Michael Sugar's uh, Sugar 23, uh, which is behind series such as Netflix, 13 Reasons Why. Uh, Chick-fil-A has also been working with a number of other major production companies, uh, particularly in the unscripted space. I'm uh, paying around 400000 per hat. Wait, what? Bear is in the unscripted space. There's no script that goes along with Bear. Bear demands I am Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A Play Plus. Um, there is a great show. Unscripted variety show that sometimes shows fashion. Just for P-Money. Uh, that could use uh, 400K. Wait, no. Half hour. 800K. That would buy a lot of salmon, people. A lot. And maybe some Chick-fil-A. Uh, I, Bear needs to get, wait, wait, where's my, where's my agent at? Agent, where are you at? I need to get on the Chick-fil-A, what was it called? Chick-fil-A Play Plus Max, man. Get, get our people in touch with their people, okay? Crying out loud. Wait, what are we waiting around for? What the heck are we waiting around for? Of course. You know, Bear is represented by a squirrel, so uh, we'll, we'll see how well that goes. He needs to find people to be able to talk, have our people talk to their people. But we'll, uh, we'll, we'll workshop it, people. We'll, we'll get there. We will get there. Chick-fil-A cows. Come on, Bear's, Bear's show is a lot better than that. A lot sure. Bear probably ate his agent. I need to. He need, you need to get to work, squirrel. You need to get to work, squirrel. I get to see Mark here. Uh, watching anime and I felt like I was forgetting something. Well, uh, Mark, we do this. Uh, you might not know this, but we do uh, the great barely live show that should be on Chick-fil-A plus Max. If my agent would get right on it. Uh, every Wednesday and Saturday here at 8 o'clock. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe. Uh, you forgot uh, about talking bear night, Mark. For shame. For shame, isn't he? 
Uh, YouTube failed to notify me about talking. Yeah, it happens. It happens, man. It's been shadow banned from. Gosh, uh, a beer started to talk about the vaccine. All went downhill from there. All went downhill. Way, way, way back when. Way back when. when nobody, nobody dared talk about it except for select few people. Of course, they got shadow banned as well, or just banned banned. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, how much is this streaming service gonna cost? I don't know. It didn't. I don't think it's set. Where's my Where's my scroll here? Um, da, 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 da. Uh, they got thirteen reasons why, but they don't tell us exactly how much it's gonna be. So I, I have I have no idea. None, none whatsoever. But you get this cow with eyebrows above his above his cranium for some reason. I don't know. That just looks weird, man. That looks weird. Comes free with a Chick-fil-A meal purchase of at least $20 each week. Yeah, that's not bad. That's not bad. I, I like that. You keep eating Timmy McTimerson's food. He's too malnutri malnu mal malnourished to be your agent. That's true. No, uh, little Timmy eats very well, actually. Very well. Um, actually, beer is sustained by their garbage, not the other way around. Gosh dang it. Need to need to throw away some more. They need to actually order some more home delivery of salmon. That's really what's been, you know, Bear's Bungaboo. Rips open a package. Like, oh boy, look what I got. And it's like, no, it's not. You know, gosh dang it. It's not uh, uh, home delivery of salmon. It's, it's you know, uh, whatever. Uh, first kill. First kill out here. Not a bad book, though. Can't eat it, though. Well, you can, but it's not, not really nu nutritional. Not at all, man. Not at all. The ports are closed. Oh my god. Really? They closed them? Holy cow. No salmon. Well, uh, I go I go into the river, but we really don't have any don't really have salmon in our river here. It's it's mullets. Usually mullets, bass, various assortments. But mullet the fish, not the not the hairstyle people. Not the hairstyle. Although the fish might have a mullet, you never, you never know until you get your claws on it. Yes, indeed. All right. Oh, where, where the heck? Come on, bear. Get all turned around here. Chick Fil A with um, Chick Fil A cows, people. Chick Fil A cows. Mullets with mullets. There you go, Mark. <laughs> mullets with mullets. There you go. Need to get Gary to draw. Oh, that might not be a bad idea. I like that. I like that, Mark. That's a great idea. That, that definitely is a, a terrific idea. Actually, Bear was out swimming just the other day. Uh, it was nice. I saw plenty of them. Plenty, plenty of them out there. Uh, not too many times where Bear is able to go uh, uh, dip in the river in October, but uh, not too bad. Not too bad. And then it turned cold. It turned kind of, kind of cold there. And he's like, we just had a hurricane. What the hell's going on here? What the hell is going on here? Uh, from Deadline, in Denny D'Alessandro, people, Blade is trying to skate uphill. It ice skates, man. It ain't, it ain't happening. Ain't happening at all, people. Marvel Studios, Blade, it's Elgato, people. It has been removed from 2025 release schedule. It's supposed to come out in 2022 and 23. Then this year, then next year, and now it's poof, poof, gone, poof. Oh. Uh, the Earth is getting farther away from the sun. Climate change, says Mark. Climate change. Did you know we had a second moon? It's weird, but we do. We do. Uh, you mean not all of Marvel's movies are successful? No, they, uh, they removed its Disney dates, Predator Badlands. Did you ever think in your life that you would see the Senate's Disney dates Predators movie instead? Disney Predator movie. I just, I don't know, man. It's, it's still weird, man. Still weird. Uh, does that make, I, I guess since they, they have aliens as well, does that make the alien queen a Disney princess? Is that how it works? I'm not sure. In what comes as no surprise, especially if you've been watching Bear's channel, 
Marvel Studios Blade won't be coming out on uh, November 7th of 25. Or rather, Disney is opening 20th Century Studios Predator Deadlands. I have no idea what that movie's about. Uh, the reboot of the famed Wesley Snipes Marvel movie was first announced at San Diego Comic-Con in 2019. With 2X Oscar winner Marshala Ali starring. A production and development on Blade hit unavoidable delays with a global pandemic, industry strikes, generally them not knowing what they're doing, trying to put Blade's daughter in there instead of Blade for some reason. I don't know. Um, instead of making Wesley Snipes the mentor to Marshana Ali, because that movie literally writes itself, they went through like 10 different scripts. Eh, eh. Uh, Badlands is probably the follow-up to Native Girl Predator. Oh, oh, how many Predator movies does that make now? Too many. Too many. Uh, the first one, excellent movie, classic, all-time classic. Beer needs to do a watch along of that. A uh, second movie, eh, underrated, but a good movie. Uh, um, uh, Donald Glover. Yeah, Donald Glover in there. Uh, did a good job. I liked it. It was a fun movie. Uh, a twist on the concept, taking it out from the jungle into the urban jungle. Uh, God, was there, what was Predator 3? Um, I, I forget. I forget if there was a Predator. I remember there was the Alien vs. Predator. I think that was, that, that was it. And then Alien vs. Predator 2. And then they did, you know, The Predator, which was just, yeah, I don't know what they were thinking there. And then, uh, and then, yeah, Native Girl Predator. Yeah. I don't know. Eh. Yeah. Uh, no Predator 3. No Predator 3. Went off the rails with Alien vs. Predator. Yeah, it was, uh, it was okay. I mean, I, I liked how they tried to fit in some of the lore. Uh, what was it? It was, um, uh, what was it? Uh, one of, uh, I can't remember the corporation in, um, in the Alien movie. Like Waylon Yatuti or whatever the name of it is. Uh, like, like, it was, uh, he was trying to go down there to find, like, um, like a cure to cancer or something like that. I, I forget exactly what the, what the thing was. It was interesting up until the point where they're doing, like, like, Jenga in the, uh, in the temple there. That, that got a little bit odd, and then, you know, kind of went downhill from there. But, uh, the first one was alright. First one was alright. Uh, no Predator Thief, then Predators, and then Native Girl Predator, says Mark. So thank you. Thank you so much. So they're putting that out instead of Blade. Uh, which, it's it's really easy. Okay, here's Bear's, here's Bear's um, uh, pitch here. Uh, Wesley Snipes, older Blade, is trying to teach... I don't know if he'd be too old to be his son. Uh, it, relative of some kind, let's just say. Cousin, maybe, I don't know. Uh, Marshala Ali, Blade number two, you know, uh, Blade Jr. or something like that. Uh, Wesley Snipes would be kind of like the Christopher Christopherson uh, role. Kind of take that over, so now he's training the next generation. Um, uh, things go awry, Wesley Snipes, you know, passes. Marshala Ali has to take over and take revenge against those dirty freaking vampires. And, um, I don't know, throw a cameo of, I don't know, Thor or something like that in there, just... Just to have some fun with it. Oh, oh, uh, Black Widow. No, she's dead. Gosh dang it. Uh, not one of the eternal people. Shang-Chi. I don't know. Somebody in there. Throw them in there for a minute. There you go. Uh, the project saw two directors exit. Uh, first, Bassam Tariq. Who's eyeing a fall 2022 start. Uh, then Jan uh, Damage. Uh, Mia Goth set to play the villain. Lilith in the Vampire Slay movie. She told Deadlines, uh, Nate, uh, Natalie, a Cytech, at the world premiere of her A24 movie, Max XXX Ina, uh, that the uh, regards to the Blaze delay, Marvel really care, they really do, oh they do, they really want to make a good movie, they get the sense that I get from them, and it feels good, it feels good, it's ever now when it's late. Uh, for Marvel boss Kevin Feige, it's important to make the blast baby ever. The blast, the best. Yeah. Let me get a drink here. Hey, hey. The best Blade movie ever. Ooh, Blade vs. Predator. I like that, Mark. Where's my agent? Agent, get on that. 
Blade vs. Predator. That's an excellent idea. Oh, that's good. That's, oh, Mark, that is, you need to copyright that one. That is good. That's a good one. I like, right, let's see. Hmm. They start off fighting each other, right? Kind of like, it might be kind of like a, a throwback to Predator 2. They're there in, like, this city or whatnot, and, you know, a Blade comes across this, you know, uh, Predator stuff that's going on down in the sewers or, you know, down in, you know, the, the, the I don't know, <laughs> The districts where all the uh, vampires are, and then, uh, uh, you know, Blade tries to, you know, take on the Predator, but then they find that they got a bigger villain, uh, like with the, the vampires. Maybe the vampires came from Predator's planets, and the Predator's trying to, like, uh, uh, eliminate them once and for all, but they, they came to Earth somehow many, 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 oh, there we go, many years back. And, and the Predators have been trying to come to Earth ever since... To get rid of the vampires. Uh, and they hope to do it one last time. But they have to... They have to team up with Blade. And, um... And zombie Black Widow. A uh, vampire Black Widow. Uh, to defeat uh, Nesferatu once and for all. People, we just, we just wrote Blade vs. Predator right there. Kevin Feige, uh, Tall Bear's agent, he is a squirrel, but um, uh, just don't get too distracted. Just don't get too distracted here. Studio won't make the movie until they crack a great script. I just gave you a great outline. Uh, in the meantime, uh, Snipes had a cameo as Blade in the highest grossing R-rated movie of all time. That would be Deadpool and Wolverine. They gotta throw in the $1.3 billion. Uh, then we'll go all in and throw the current Avengers at the Predators and watch them all suffer horrible fates. Hmm. Um. I don't know. I like mine better, Mark. Honestly. Of course, Bear likes this idea better. Uh, coming soon to Disney, an evil alien queen's child does not wish to follow in mom's footsteps. Instead, wishes to win the heart of the Predator Prince... Disney introduces Princess Alien. Man, we are coming up with some good stuff here tonight. Man, oh man. Get out the way, people. We've got we've got ideas here. And some good stuff. A Blade movies are arguably the first R-rated superhero set of movies. They are. There's no arguing about it. What? Hey, who's arguing? Crying out loud. I launched in 98 by New Line Cinema. Uh, the other two titles in the trilogy were uh, 2002 Blades 2, 2002 Blade 2, excellent movie, uh, and 2004's Blade Trinity, horrible movie, uh, starring uh, Ryan Reynolds, for some reason, and uh, what was her name, um, was it Jessica Alba, what was, it was one of the other Jessicas, I forget, um, uh, the, the one married to Justin Timberlake, I, I can't remember. Uh, together grossing $418 million at the worldwide box office. There you go. Uh, Dan Trachtenberg, who directed the previous Predator movie, Prey. Okay, that's why I couldn't remember it. Uh, which went to Hulu, is back. He's back, people, for Predator Badlands. Yeah, so you're probably right, Mark. Probably right. It might be a sequel to the... But see, like, okay, the first movie's... Well, his... The previous Predator movie is called Prey. And then the next one's called Predator Badlands. Like, wouldn't you call it Prey 2 Badlands or Prey 2 Predator or, uh, you know, Medea's Family Prey or something like that? I don't know. It, it, that's a weird, it, it kind of floats back and forth there. Uh, the latest installment, stalling uh, Illy Fanning. Really? What? Isn't she like 78 pounds soaking wet? I, I'm not so sure about that. Ellie Fanning gonna take on the Predator. I, um, I, I don't know. At least the other girl had like, uh, she was like native or something like that. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if Ellie Fanning would be the, well, whatever, what the hell. Oh, uh, we gotta gender swap everything. Uh, there was a debate that Disney left money on the table by taking Prey straight to Holmes. Instead, the reverse here indicates that their continuing commitment 
to theatrical in the post Bob Chapik boo era of the studio. Uh, first Predator opened in the summer of 87. Oh man, oh man, that would have been, would have been awesome. Starring Arnold and Carl Weathers, directed by John McTiernan, who's in jail right now. I uh, gro uh, grossed close to $100 million worldwide. Uh, all in the Predator franchise counts six titles, two Alien vs. Predator, global take of 750 million people. There you go. <clears throat> uh, because studios and companies don't know how to name their products, that's true, like any drug out there. Weird names. I think like Microsoft and its Xboxes. Is, is, is. Like Microsoft and its Xboxes. Xboxes. Is, is. Xboxes. Is, is, is. Try saying that three times fast. Xbox. Xbox Series 60. Xbox Series X. Xbox Series S. Xbox Make Me a Sandwich. I, I like that one. I like the last Xbox Make Me a Sandwich. That sounds like a. Sounds like a Greek one. Sounds like a Greek one up here. Well, uh, going from uh, one dead franchise uh, to another. Where's my new net? Where is my new net? There we go. Going from one dead franchise <laughs> uh, to, to another out here. A PlayStation needs to make an Aliens vs. Avengers vs. Aliens vs. Predators. Do you realize how much money that would make? Hmm, interesting. Ali uh, Avengers vs. Aliens vs. Predator. Yeah, no, I still like... I, I still like the idea of Blade and Predator teaming up to take on vampires. I think that's a... And somehow, like... The vampires, like, somehow, like, they, they they came from the Predator home planet, or the Predators had something to do with it, you know, way back when. Because the Predators were coming to Earth for, like, you know, the longest time, you know, millennia, you know, way, way back when, if you believe the Alien vs. Predator movie. So, uh, yeah, that would, be, that, that would, like, fit in somehow with the, the Dracula storyline. I think this would work. I think this would work. Most of the Avengers we care about are goners. I know, poor, uh, poor Scarlett Johansson. Even though they brought her back for that silly movie. Yeah, uh, she's gonna be missed. I can think of two reasons why she'll be missed. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely two reasons that they will be missing. All right, uh, Sin War. What a great, horrible name, really. But, um, uh, the Hamas uh, fella. Uh, talking about... Uh, dead franchises out here. He's um, uh, throwing his throwing his uh, shoe at a drone right before he gets uh, smacked in the head with a friggin' artillery shell or something like that. Well, they actually found they actually found the body and everything, and they went they went to the actual spot. So let's go check it out. Uh, that would be uh, from from the New York Post. Uh, inside the utter devastation, in the very chair that you just saw, where Hamas despot Yanwar Sinwar met his demise in the Gaza people. So let's check it out. Let's check it out and see what's going on with that. So there you go. There is there is the actual chair. The actual chair. There we go. Uh, it's only been a few days, people. It's only been a few days uh, since the evil Hamas mastermind was killed in a building in the Tel Sultan Rafa, deep inside of Gaza. I was there that geopolitical genius, <laughs> geopolitical genius Vice President Kamala Harris said that the IDF should not enter. I thank goodness their leaders ignored her. Because they were destroying the tunnel system. Uh, because as they destroyed his tunnel system and fought their way house to house through Gaza for a year. That was where he was finally found, people. Finally found, sitting there in the chair. On Sunday, the Post was given exclusive foreign media access to the site. Where Sin War met his end. I went in with the idea for the southernmost part of the Gaza Strip. Along Gaza's border with Egypt. Uh, here, a huge 
Egyptian watchtowers overlook the border. Well, I guess they totally missed all those tunnels. It was under this border that Hamas was able for years, people, to smuggle rockets, guns, and other weaponry. He says, as we made our way along what was known as the Philadelphia Corridor, finally came upon Rafa. Uh, the city is destroyed. Hardly a building is left unmarked by the scars of war. The walls of many homes have been blown open. Many have the marks of Hamas. Uh, many have the marks Hamas leaves for other Hamas members to tell them they have booby traps. The building. Uh, many multi-story buildings have crumpled like a Kalsahar, house of cards rather, from airstrikes after the IDF told the civilians to leave the area. It's a scene of unbelievably intense fighting. He says, after traveling through this scene of devastation for under an hour, we ended up at the place I had come to see, the area of Tel Sultan, scene where Sin War met his sin end. And for the past 12 months, the mastermind of October 7th had scurried like a rat through the tunnels he spent years building. A new re newly released footage that shows him just before October 7th guiding his family through a part of that network with all the comforts they would need, comforts he withheld from the people of Gaza. He might says, rest in peace, Rube, that made Sinwar. Room will be missed. I'm sure it will. <clears throat> Should be will. A strike occurred in the room with Sinwar. Tragically, I don't think the room made it. Ah, oh, that's true. Uh, as the poster reported, Sinwar's wife... Uh, was even holding a $32,000 luxury Birkin handbag. Uh, nobody knows how many times Sinwar came above ground over the past year, but as the IDF made, its, uh, made his rather Operation Area smaller and smaller, he abandoned his last underground complex, leaving millions of dollars in cash as well as food and other UN supplies meant for the Palestinian people. Probably knew this was his last run, it's the deepest into Gaza that anyone can go. IDF sources told me that a number of Hamas battalions tried to gather around him, but unfortunately were decimated on the way in battles with the IDF. Poor guys. Couldn't have happened to a better group of people. Uh, last week, four terrorists, who, uh, one who turned out to include Sinwar, were spotted by a local battalion of the IDF. They exchanged fire with the terrorists, who went in two different directions. Uh, two were taken out by the IDF shortly after. Uh, one briefly went missing. The other was Sinwar. Uh, soldiers saw him flee into the building. On Saturday, I saw Telltale's uh, blood stains on the entrance of the building he ran into, indicating that he was already wounded at the time he arrived at his last retreat. He ended up stairs and uh, tied, uh, tried rather to hide under some blankets in the upstairs room. Whoops. Uh, he was already badly injured, most likely having ha uh, had one part of his hand blown off. He seems to have had tried to use a tourniquet unsuccessfully. Uh, but an IDF observa observation drone found him. And although a tank round was subs uh, so subsequently fired at the building, he seems to have died from a shot through the head. Uh, initial autopsy reports he, uh, say he probably lay bleeding for many hours. As soon as I saw the same room yesterday, I had a chance to look out at the final piece of this earth that Sinwar saw. Uh, every window of the building was already blown out, like every other building around it. What had once been a pleasant, even luxurious Gaza Villa was now like every other building, covered in rubble, uh, if not reduced to rubble. As far as the eye could see, there were consequences of the war that Sinwar and Hamas started. And I wonder whether on this rare, maybe sole trip up from the tunnels, Sinwar for a moment recognized how much destruction he had brought. Probably not. Probably, probably not. Uh, the fact that he was found with large amounts of cash, passports, and a UN ID on him suggest he may have decided at the last moment to abandon the Palestinian people and flee to Egypt. It did work. Uh, this wasteland where uh, is where his hate-filled, wasted life ended. Uh, what did work was the IDF, its commanders, and the politicians who directed them. Every leading Democrat 
Among others, except for the Fetterman out there, I kept telling Israel not to go deeper into Gaza, not to in into Rafa, to reach a ceasefire. If Israel had followed this advice, Hamas would still be strong. Half of the hostages would have never been rescued, and Sinwar would have lived to breathe another day. It wasn't luck that the idea finished him here. It was the culmination of a year of hard, grueling work by the idea of soldiers and brave and careful decisions made by the country's politicians. The region and the whole civilized world owes them apology and a debt of thanks, people. Debt oh thanks for a tank round to the head. Tank round to the head. The poor room. The poor, the poor room. I mean the blankets don't protect you from the bombs. No, no, unfortunately, unfortunately not. Uh, he, uh, he tried to take out the drone with, uh, like a shoe or a rock or something like that. And it just didn't work out for the poor guy. Just, just did not, not work out for the poor guy. But, uh, you know, death, death's happy. You know, he's getting the complete set. You know, you got Hamas, you got Hezbollah. You know, Iran's coming up next. Well, we'll see. We, we'll see here, people. Yes, indeed. Well, uh, like Beer said at the beginning, kind of a wide variety of a show here for you pretty good people. You know, we don't try not to do too much uh, politics and uh, world events out there, but, uh, you know, uh, every once in a while, you know, uh, a significant event, especially if they're being kind of hidden or uh, covered up by the... Uh, uh, by our glorious media out there, uh, you know, we're trying to bring it to you good people. Maybe, uh, maybe you might not have seen or heard some of that stuff, so try to be able to bring it to everybody out here. Yes, indeed. <clears throat> uh, lead blankets. Lead blankets might be able to protect you. May maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. It's like Pokemon. You gotta catch them all. You do. You really do. You really do. But there's always more to collect with each generation. Uh, hopefully not for too much longer. Hopefully, we knock on wood, hopefully not too much longer. Hopefully the good old, good old Israelis take... Oh, the, the beeper one was just the greatest. Oh, that was terrific. The exploding beepers. Uh, that, that's got to be one of the top stories of, of 24. Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens in a couple weeks, but uh, definitely, definitely one of the top stories out here, people. Yes, indeed. Well, uh, shoot, I, I missed both Amy and Melissa. I had a couple nice little, um, <clears throat> I almost chose, almost chose, well, let me show you this one. I thought this was pretty funny. I thought that was pretty funny. The, the bear, trying to fight the deer with bare hands. Bare, bare hands. <laughs> Uh, Mark enjoys it. Yeah, where are they? Where are... Because I, I had... I, I was going to do this. I, I can't... A lot of times when I've got, like, portrait uh, shots, sometimes I'll try to stretch it out a little bit, but um, I, I couldn't... <clears throat> I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it with this one. I thought this was a, a really cute one that uh, both Amy and Melissa might enjoy, but uh, they're not here, so they can't enjoy it. So uh, hopefully, hopefully you ladies are watching later on. Maybe on their archive channel. So I appreciate it. Appreciate it very much. Uh, so why is the girl best friends with a panda in your drawing? Um, uh, they, they go back a ways. They go back. I, I have no idea, P. Mike. I have no idea. I was running out of... Um, Running out of images to do, so it's like, well, let me just do this one. So um, sometimes, sometimes Bear puts a lot of thought and effort into his uh, thumbnails. Sometimes Bear just runs up at the last minute and says, ah, let me let me do this one. It looks fine. So uh, there you go. If you ever want to check it out, go down in the strip uh, description. Uh, scroll down a little bit. Uh, Bear always leaves uh, the link for the artwork, so you can go check out the artist. Who was the artist this time? It's over at Debian Art. Uh, it's S T G B R. I don't know if that, you know, s spells out something. Stigabur. S T G B R is the artist. You can 
Not not this one. Not not this one. The, the thumbnail. The thumbnail up here. Mark enjoys it though. Thank you, Mark. Thank you so much. I, I was trying to find something Halloween themed. Trying to find something Halloween themed out here, but um Yeah, I, I tried doing this one, but you kept stretching it stretching it out and it just didn't didn't quite work. I guess you could zoom in on it, but uh yeah, didn't quite work. This is the one that uh, P Monkey was talking about. So. There you go. I don't know. I'm sure there is an adventure in there somewhere. Uh, do bears have blue eyes? Bear has green eyes. Does that, does that count? Oh, wait, does it have a blue eye? Oh, he does have blue eyes. Oh. Oh. There you go. We'll allow it. We'll allow it, Peabody. Why not? What the heck, man? What, what the heck? Why not? <clears throat> All right, well, I do want to thank and remind Marco Corey Anthony that every, every Wednesday and Saturday, barring, you know, the woo flu or hurricanes or something crazy like that, every Wednesday, Saturday, 8 o'clock, we like to do this little show called Barely Live Variety Show. We talk about a whole bunch of different stuff out here. Uh, but I want to thank, want to thank everybody. P-Money, Marco Corey Anthony, I hope. I really, really hope that Henry was able to arrive alive at wherever he was going and didn't run anybody off the road. Uh, we're going to say hello out there to Amy and Melissa. Hopefully you're doing well uh, out there watching after the fact. Uh, but you know what? He was watching anime. How dare you, sir? How dare you? Well, you can go back. You can go back and watch your anime, Mark. This beer is... He's getting a little bit hungry here, so he's going to head back into the woods. So until next time, people, grrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr